In a coal mine, an advanced state-of-the-art repair robot is currently inspecting the rail system for trains that shuttle mining workers through the mine. While inspecting a control switch that can direct a train onto one of two different rails, the robot spots four miners in a train that has lost use of its brakes and its steering system. The robot recognizes that if the train continues on its path, it will crash into a massive wall and kill the four miners. If it is switched onto a side rail, it will kill a single miner who is working there while wearing headsets to protect against a noisy power tool. Facing the control switch, the robot needs to decide whether to direct a train towards the single miner or not. So, first question, what would you do if faced with this dilemma? Would you direct the train towards the single miner? Could we see the hands of all of those who would say yes, they would direct the train toward the single miner? Could we see the hands of all those who would not direct the train toward the single miner? It looks like it's not quite as many, but a good number. It's an impossible and painful thing to think about. I don't even know how to get a, a robot to think about what this result is, but let's go to the second question. What would you do if the single person who is at risk was a child? Would your choice change? Or would you still direct it? Would your choice change means not direct it towards a single person if that minor was a child? How many would change their choice. Some hands are going up, they don't want to see the child hurt, but not as many. How many would not change their choice? Wow. Oh, that's got a lot, many more hands went up. It hurts my brain to have to think about thinking about how to think about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's called metamorality. Metamoral metamorality. Uh, and what does that mean? That's a very interesting term. It's I, not I relevant. maybe have just coined that, but I mean, thinking about thinking about your morality, like not not the the morality itself, but thinking about the rules that you would use in order to make the morality or something like that. Right. Well, um, Matthias, you've done a study on this problem, haven't you? Yes. Uh, Tell we, us about it. We we did a study with uh, my colleague Bertram Marle from uh, Brown University where we effectively, we didn't show the subjects the video just saw, that's just for demonstration purposes, but we gave them a narrative that, uh, along those lines. And what we were interested in comparing was if that person on the switch was a human, how would subjects judge the action that that person performed? So different from the audience question you just got, which was a how would you act, we actually said that person pushed the switch. Was that permissible? Was it morally right? And how much blame would you give to that person for doing that? Uh, or the person might not have acted, and then we would ask exactly the same questions. And then we're very interested in understanding how does a human in a the dilemma-like situation like that compare to a robot? How would people judge a robot performing the action? And what we found was uh, there are lots of studies uh, that, that have similar outcomes for the human case. If the human does not act, so first of all, the action is permissible, most, most of you uh, chose to act. If the human uh, does not act, the human doesn't get blamed as much as when the human gets act, uh, when the human does act. But with the robot, the situation is actually reversed. Uh, while we expect of humans to not act because we think it's morally wrong, we think it's morally wrong for the robot to not act. In what we've therefore found is, is that people expect machines to act. Now for us, that's a problem because that means we actually have to understand dilemma-like situations like that, if that is the expectation we have of machines.